Hi guys, in this video we are going over the blood vessels in the heart itself. And we will start by looking at the big heart model. Here we have the model and here we have the heart blood vessels. Now, look at this. This is the pulmonary trunk and here is the aorta. If we remove this, we can see that this valve right here was at the entrance of the aorta. This valve looks like half moons. So this is a semilunar valve at the entrance of the aorta. This is the aortic semilunar valve. Now, here we have the aorta. And at the base of the aorta, we have two blood vessels branching. And these two blood vessels are named coronary arteries. They are named coronary arteries because this indentation that we have right here that goes around the heart like a corona, like a crown, is the coronary sulcus. So these arteries that are running in the coronary sulcus were named coronary arteries. Wonderful. We know that we need to identify right and left of the heart like we are looking at our patient's heart and our patient is facing us. So, this is the left side of the heart and this is the right side of the heart. Now, when we look at these blood vessels right here, we know that these are coronary arteries. This one is going to the left side, so this is the left coronary artery, and this one is the right coronary artery. The right coronary artery goes in the right side direction, and when it reaches all the way in the posterior aspect of the heart, the right coronary artery gives rise to the posterior interventricular artery is an artery that's between the ventricles interventricular in the posterior aspect of the heart so the right coronary artery gives rise to the posterior interventricular artery right here when we look at the left coronary artery we can see that the left coronary artery Basically, after it goes behind the pulmonary trunk, which is right here, it splits into two, you see? It splits right there. And we have one branch of the left coronary artery that goes down in the anterior aspect of the heart between the ventricles. This was named anterior interventricular artery. And the other branch keeps going around like a circle. And that is the circumflex artery. Now, everyone remembers the anterior aspect of the heart. It is the great part of the heart. Everyone remembers. And no one remembers the posterior aspect of the heart. And that's how you do to remember that this vein in the anterior aspect of the heart, which is the great aspect of the heart, is the great cardiac vein. And in the back, that no one cares, we have a vein in the middle. How this was named? The middle cardiac vein. So the middle cardiac vein runs parallel to the posterior interventricular artery. And the great cardiac vein runs parallel to the anterior interventricular artery. Wonderful. Now let's go back here. All these veins, they dump the blood into this vein right here, which is called coronary sinus, because this is in the coronary sulcus, in that sulcus that's between the atrium and the ventricle. So you have here the coronary sinus receiving all this deoxygenated blood. And if we look inside of the right atrium, we see the opening of the coronary sinus right here. Because the coronary sinus will dump all this deoxygenated blood inside of the right atrium of the heart. Besides the opening of the coronary sinus, delivering deoxygenated blood 
to the right atrium. We also have the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava bringing deoxygenated blood here into the right atrium. And then this deoxygenated blood will go into the right ventricle. And when the right ventricle contracts, this blood will be pumped up into the pulmonary trunk. So this is how this goes. And if you look right here, this is the right ventricle, and that is the pulmonary semilunar valve, because that is at the entrance of the pulmonary trunk. So when the blood is inside of the right ventricle, it will be pumped up, goes through that valve, and then ends up inside of the pulmonary trunk. And the pulmonary trunk is split into the pulmonary arteries. The pulmonary arteries are arteries and they do carry deoxygenated blood within them. Because they are taking this used up blood towards the lungs to get oxygenated. So, we have deoxygenated blood inside of arteries. And that's completely fine because what defines an artery is the blood vessel that takes blood away from the heart. And this blood vessel right here, the pulmonary arteries, are taking blood away from the heart into the lungs. So, these are the pulmonary arteries. Now, the blood gets oxygenated in the lungs, and then the blood comes back to the heart inside of the pulmonary veins. So, these are the pulmonary veins because these blood vessels are bringing blood back to the heart. And inside of the pulmonary veins, we have oxygenated blood because what classifies a vein is a blood vessel that brings blood towards the heart is venga to the heart so veins bring blood towards the heart and inside of the pulmonary veins we have oxygenated blood even though they're veins and that's why you have the pulmonary veins labeled in red because the red color in blood vessels makes a reference to the oxygenated blood. And we have the pulmonary arteries in blue. Because blue blood vessels in models make a reference to deoxygenated blood.